and my turn to this is not enough tech. You probably know what would happen if I took a sort of basic device and a USB cable and mash them both together. I would get a sort of micro. And we talk, we're going to talk about sort of micro today. And uh, this uh, particular device has been sent to me by IT at guys. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. And we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things and then we're going to pick inside because there are secrets to discover and I'm not only talking about the lack of ESP inside. A closer look at this device reveals a button which you can obviously use to toggle and for pairing purposes there are two LED lights but in all honesty they are very dim and it's hard to tell whether the device is on or off just by looking at it and USB ports that are offset by 90 degrees, a slightly peculiar design choice. Looking at the power specification, it supports DC 1.2, which basically stands for basic charging. You're not going to get any fast charger, quick charge or any other protocols, but 5 volts and up to 2.4 amps through this device. Right, that's disappointing. What's also disappointing is that the device doesn't actually use the reversible connectors. Those USB type A plugs do exist and you could use them to actually make this device more compatible with uh, chargers. But by far the biggest disappointment is actually the inability to transfer data. Which means if you have a camera and you would like to pass through the feed and have a manual cutoff, that's not going to work. But before I'm gonna get this open to explore what's inside, let's talk about software. And obviously this is a Sonoff device, so like any other Sonoff device, it uses eWilink application. Now, I recently discovered how to use the eWilink API to control these devices without hacking it, which is extremely helpful because the firmware on this device is 3.4 and you are unable to use DIY mode. If you're interested more about using API from eWilink, there is a video here explaining this for you. Now, as a son of device in eWilink, it supports timers and schedules, you have an inching and obviously your OTA updates, push notifications, etc. On top of that, you've got the usual eWilink integrations, including Amazon smart speakers and the same ones coming from Google. All right, it's time to get this open and that's going to be a challenge because the device is sealed and glued in. So I guess I'm gonna take out my knife and try not to cut myself. As you can see the enclosure is glued in which means you have to be very careful, careful with your knife. Now opening this inside I've noticed how little space the PCB takes and uh, frankly speaking I would expect a redesign of this because it could take so much less space and it would accommodate the charges that have multiple USB ports without obscuring the uh, USB ports nearby. Looking at the PCB, I can confirm there is no ESP on board. What we've got is CKW04 Wi-Fi chip. And now that's get, that gets me wondered, because on the chipset itself, we have a branding from eWilink support. That would suggest that they moved from ESP to more in-house develop uh, solutions. But at the same time, we still have development pads on the board, which would enable hacking. Now, this where it's the information that eWilink actually is trying to introduce some premium plans into their app makes me wonder is sort of moving away from open source approach and hackable solutions into a more closed ecosystem or this is just a one-off experiment. Since Tasmota is no-go on this device I've decided to use eWilink API to control it via an old red and this is when things got even more interesting. Now setting it up is very simple, you look for your device, you find the device ID, you hook it up and then you can control it using commands toggle on and off. However, checking the number of channels, I found that this device indeed comes with four channels. Now software wise, Sonoff Micro supports up to four channels that you can actually toggle. Tracers on the PCB confirm that the data lanes are not in use, which means there is only one switching solution to probably interrupt the VCC lane. It looks like a prototype for Sonoff Micro had the support for data transfer. However, this data transfer was removed from the hardware and only the choices in the software right now are available. I know this because the information about the devices are pulled from eWilink account and that eWilink device profile reveals support for up to four different channels 
which would correspond with four different wires of USB 2.0. And there is a last question to answer. Why would you use a sum of micro over a smart plug? And you see this is a tough choice mostly because uh, this doesn't have a data pass through which means for the most part it just works like a smart socket. So unless your needs are based around the USB and you want to save a couple of uh, dollars uh, by buying a cheaper device, a Son of Micro is on average cheaper than your smart plug. Now if you want to have something that you're going to use in multiple places, you're probably better off with a smart plug. In my next project, I'm going to use some of Micro to create a smarter overnight charging. So if you're interested in that, be aware that I do not have a posting schedule and it's best to follow me on social media to get a notification when the new content is out. Obviously you know how YouTube works, but not all my content comes with a video, so it's best to pick uh, the uh, social media of your choice and follow me there. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.